Hello, and welcome back to Felony Spectator. I am your host, Heather. Today's episode, we're going to discuss the disappearance and death of Jaden Raymond Lesky. One of my subscribers suggested this case because it's one that's extremely frustrating. There are also so many strange circumstances surrounding this case, and the fact that it's still technically unsolved is really upsetting. Let's jump in. Jaden Lesky was born April 30th, 1996, and is the son of Belinda Williams and Brent Lesky. Belinda and Brett had been engaged and also had a daughter named Brianna, who was born a year before Jaden. Belinda and Brett ended up ending their engagement a year after Jaden was born. After they separated, Belinda moved in with her mom with both kids, Jaden and Brianna, in Moe, Australia, and Brett had moved to another state. Since Brett had moved away, he wasn't around to help out with childcare, so Belinda only had to rely on local babysitters or her own family. Soon after her breakup, in April of 2007, Belinda started dating a man by the name of Greg Demasowicz. He was a 28-year-old unemployed mechanic. Belinda was fond of Greg, but some accounts say that Greg was actually still sleeping with his ex, Yvonne Penfold. Despite his lack of being fully committed to Belinda, he would often look after her son, Jaden. He would say years later that he offered because he felt bad. He thought Jaden needed a male role model, someone to play video games with and work on cars with. Mind you, Jaden was only one years old. When Greg first had offered to watch Jaden, it said that Belinda thought this was a bit strange because they'd only been dating for a few months, but her sister actually encouraged it and said that it would be just fine. So Greg had watched Jaden a few times. A friend of theirs said that one time Greg had taken Jaden fishing with them and apparently dropped Jaden over a fence. Now accidents happen and it was witnessed by the friend that Greg did comfort Jaden and helped him with blood on his face. The problem was that when Belinda picked Jaden up later, he lied and said that he must have scraped his face while playing. Another time while Jaden was with Greg, he returned home with a bruise on his face that somewhat resembled a hand mark. When questioned, Greg had said that he accidentally hit Jaden's head with the car door. There were other times where Greg would turn up the volume on the stereo to drown out Jaden's cries. Apparently Jaden cried a lot or he cried when he was hungry. The neighbor also said he would leave Jaden outside to play with the dogs for long periods of time. And remember, Jaden was only a year old, so babies cry. But despite these situations that most people would find upsetting, Belinda continued to date Greg and also have him babysit. On June 12th, 1997, she picked up Jaden and discovered that Greg cut Jaden's hair. Greg cut Jaden's hair in a weird mullet, so it was sort of shaved in the front to resemble Greg's receding hairline. I would be furious, and I guess she was too, but again, she got over it. On Saturday, June 14th, 1997, only two days after the haircutting incident, while Jaden was only 13 months old, Belinda left Jaden with Greg again. Belinda had plans to go out to celebrate with a friend for their birthday, and she had originally asked her babysitter to watch Jaden and his sister at Katie's house, which is her sister. But that morning, Greg showed up at her house and asked if he could hang out with Jaden on Saturday for a few hours. So Belinda packed a bag with spare clothes, diaper, an apple, and other things she thought that he might need and asked Greg to drop Jaden off to Katie's house just around 4 p.m. in the afternoon and the babysitter would take over. Strangely, at 4 p.m., he never showed up. When Belinda called Greg, he said not to worry, he was on his way. And during this phone call, it said that there was an argument between the sisters because of something Greg had said. And I guess whatever it was really upset Belinda and upset her enough that she wanted to go home and her night was over. So Belinda walked home with her daughter and tried to call Greg to tell him not to go to Katie's house with Jaden, but to bring him to her house instead. Belinda was unable to reach Greg, but she trusted him, so she just thought that maybe he decided to look after Jaden for a little bit longer. 
If there was a problem, surely he'd call her. Then during the evening, Katie and Belinda made up. So they went ahead with their plans to go to the birthday party. Belinda brought her daughter back over to Katie's house and tried to reach Greg one more time unsuccessfully. At around 11 p.m., they made it to a place called Ryan's Hotel and finally got in touch with Greg. Greg had told her that Jaden had leaned up against a heater and had gotten burned. And I guess that's why he didn't answer the phone, because he needed to take Jaden to the hospital. He would go on to say that he first took Jaden to the Moe hospital, but he didn't like how they were treating Jaden. So he left and then he went to Maryville Hospital. He reassured her that he'd stay with Jaden and she should just stay out and have fun. Belinda had wanted to go home. Of course, a mother would want to go and see their baby after hearing about an accident. Katie, her sister, then called Greg back and Greg told her that it was just a joke and to go and have fun anyways. This obviously bothered Belinda, but Katie comforted her and she made sure they'd continue drinking and have a good time. At around 2.30 a.m., Belinda would call Greg asking him to pick her up. He would leave his house and go pick Belinda up at Ryan's Hotel in Trelgron, Victoria, which was about 20 minutes away. Greg would be by himself when he picked Belinda up, and Belinda did ask why Jaden wasn't in the car, but Greg told her that Jaden was still in the hospital. Greg would then give her more alcohol to drink on their way home, telling her that everything would be okay. She asked Greg to take her to the hospital instead because she really wanted to see Jaden, but he said no, that she was too drunk and it would make her look very bad, so they would just see him in the morning instead. When they pulled up to Greg's house, they noticed that the house was vandalized. And apparently they went into the house and Greg looked around a bit and looked in some cupboards, but didn't mention anything about Jaden. Belinda told him to call the cops, but he didn't like the cops and he wanted to deal with it on his own. His first thought that Yvonne Penfold had something to do with the vandalism, who was his ex-girlfriend. Greg then decided to take Belinda home, but before dropping Belinda off, he drove past Yvonne's home where they noticed that the lights were on. He would then continue driving and drop Belinda off where she would fall asleep on the floor in the living room in front of the heater. Greg would say at this point, he decided to just drive around and look for Jaden. And then just before 5 a.m., he would return to Belinda's to tell her that Jaden was gone. He would say that he lied about Jaden being in the hospital. He had allegedly left Jaden sleeping on the couch and didn't want to wake him up. But now Jaden was actually missing, presumably abducted from his home, and he'd blame the vandals. The two of them would then go to the Moe police to file a missing persons report. Police would launch a full-scale search. Posters were put up all over, the public were helping in the search, and the disappearance was widely reported in the media to bring Jaden home. And while Greg was being somewhat helpful, he didn't actually have an alibi. There is a phone record showing that Greg called Yvonne at 3.09 a.m., and that call lasted about 17 seconds. Even more bizarre was that around 4 a.m., Greg was pulled over by police to do a breathalyzer test. And for some reason, it didn't occur to him to tell the officer that he was driving around searching for a missing boy. He also didn't inform the officer that his house was vandalized either. During the initial investigation, police would find a severed pig's head sitting in Greg's front lawn and several of his windows were smashed. Now, who would leave a pig's head at Greg's house? Apparently, it was Greg's ex-girlfriend, Yvonne Penfold, her brother, Ken Penfold, and their friend, Darren Wilson. They'd gone to Greg's house specifically to vandalize it, and this was allegedly revenge for how Greg treated Yvonne. Yvonne would later reveal that she once sprayed Greg with pepper spray after he tried to strangle her in the kitchen. So why the pig's head? Well, Greg used to own a pig. He raised it from a piglet to a full-grown pig. And apparently, Yvonne, according to him, had taken the pig after a heated argument and made it into pork chops. However, Yvonne claims that the two of them decided together to slaughter the pig, but she knew he loved it and the pig's head was just a cruel joke. 
So Avon, Kenny, and this group of vandals would later be dubbed the pig's head team. And this would put a bit of a wrench in the initial investigation because now police not only had to find Jaden, but they also needed to figure out if the pig's head team was a coincidence or did they have an involvement into the disappearance? Kenny actually says that they witnessed Greg come out of the house, walk his garbage bin down to the end of the driveway, put something in it, and then go back into the house. Police would later learn that what he threw away were bloody tissues. Greg would then come back outside, get into his car, and drive away. And that's when Kenny and the Pig's Head team went to work. Those bloody tissues would later be tested and confirmed to be Jaden's blood. During the first 24 hours, police did come to the conclusion that nobody from the Pig's Head team actually entered the home. After the windows broke, there were sharp shards of glass all around the windows. That was relatively undisturbed. And I guess they believe if someone would have tried to climb through, they'd either knock off those shards or cut themselves. So police do maintain that there were no signs of break and enter, and it was just vandalism. With that said, Kenny did have an extensive criminal record, including break and enter. Now, even though the crime scene was somewhat disturbed, it also served as proof that Jaden probably wasn't even home because when the pig's head team broke the windows, no sounds of crying, voices, or anything for that matter was heard from inside the home. Some speculation would be that the pig's head team might have accidentally hurt Jaden while they were vandalizing the home and had taken him to cover their tracks. But why would Kenny leave a pig's head, admit to vandalizing the home, and then put themselves at the scene if they had nothing to do with Jaden? The entire pig's head team has denied that anyone went into the home or that they even knew about Jaden. The police unfortunately didn't take fingerprints at all inside the home. What they did find was $600 in wet money under Greg's mattress. The wetness also appeared to be quite substantial, meaning that the money was probably submerged and not just dampened. They would also find a wet jacket in the back of Greg's vehicle and a very wet wallet on the floor under the gas pedal. The car did have some wetness and I guess there was a leak and water would get inside, but police said that it didn't seem like the same level as wetness as the wallet, which was quite saturated. When police asked for the clothes Greg was wearing the night of the incident, he would go to a large pile of clothes in his room, pick up one piece of clothing at a time, smell it before picking up another item and smelling that. And the police didn't end up determining what he even wore that night and they didn't gather any clothing. The investigators also didn't take anything from the laundry hamper, even though it said that whatever was in the hamper was also quite wet. Greg was always the number one suspect, and at times Jaden's mom Belinda would also be looked into, and it was mostly because Greg's stories kept changing, and his disposition in the first few hours really weren't typical. When he first came to the police station with Belinda, he said they had taken Jaden from his house between 2.30 and 3.20 a.m. that morning, they being the abductors. He said he went to Avon's to look for Jaden, even though he didn't actually do that, he just drove past her house. Greg also claims he didn't report the disappearance or the vandalism because he didn't trust the police. He would go on to say that Yvonne, his ex, was sleeping with a senior Moe officer, but that officer would say that he was only a family friend and there was no sexual relationship. Finally, on July 16, 1997, Greg was arrested in connection to the disappearance of Jaden and charged with murder, but the police only had circumstantial evidence and were really trying hard to build a case, so he'd remain in custody and his trial wouldn't be for another year. Sadly, on January 1st, 1998, six months after his disappearance, Jaden's little body was discovered by picnickers at Blue Rock Dam about 11 miles north of Moe. Also found was a child-sized sleeping bag with a crowbar, and 200 meters away from Jaden was a bag with baby boots, a bottle, a bib, and an apple. Belinda did identify the sleeping bag as one her sister Katie had lent her, 
but she couldn't recall if she'd even ever left it at Greg's house. Medical examiners found that Jaden had a broken arm that was splintered with a piece of wood and bandaged. He had severe head trauma and was drugged with Benzhexol, which is a drug that treats Parkinson's disease or schizophrenia. His clothes were sent for DNA testing, and it was noted that there was some staining on the bib and pants. When brought to the lab, there was a positive but weak reaction of human blood from the bib. The blood would be from a female DNA profile, but compared to anyone who knew Jaden, it wasn't a match. That profile was then put through a Victoria Police forensic database, and strangely, it came back as a rape victim from Melbourne who had no link to Jaden whatsoever or anyone close to the case. It would then be speculated that this was more likely a cross-contamination at the lab, because it was the same scientist who tested both samples around the same time. The rape victim also did speak with police, and she did not know anyone from Moe, never heard of Jaden, and never left the Melbourne area. It's also said that it would be highly unlikely to get DNA from a bib that was submerged in water for months, so contamination at the lab was most likely the case. Prosecutors knew that all they had was circumstantial evidence, but they thought it would be enough to convince a jury that he was responsible. But during the trial, reasonable doubt would pop up everywhere. Belinda had allegedly dressed Jaden in a different outfit than what he was found in. She also didn't send that sleeping bag to Greg's house with her son, and definitely not a bib. Now, Belinda didn't believe Greg was responsible, so she made it clear to the jury that there was no way Greg would have those items, and she really tried hard to defend him. Defense attorneys also did their best to put reasonable doubt into the jurors by giving them as many alternate theories as possible. Unfortunately, when the pig's head crew were called to the stand, they became quite agitated and made a huge spectacle in the courtroom, which probably caused jurors to think that these men were capable of being violent enough to kill a child. So Greg was acquitted of the murder of Jaden Lesky. An inquiry into the death of Jaden happened eight years later. A coroner would say that they believe that Greg did have a hand in the death and possibly disposing of the body. Lack of evidence would still be an issue to put all the blame on Greg. But despite that, Greg still denies having anything to do with Jaden. He does, however, say that he holds guilt for leaving Jaden home alone, sleeping on the couch when he went to pick up Belinda. I read the inquest, and here are some things I thought were important to note. It said that Jaden and Greg arrived home at 2 p.m. in the afternoon that day he was babysitting. But after that, nobody saw or heard from Jaden, not even the neighbors, despite the fact that Jaden typically would spend time playing in the backyard with the dogs. Greg also had an hour-long phone call with someone by the name of Darren Farr. Darren claims that Greg did not mention that he was looking after Jaden during that hour-long phone call. At the end of the phone call, Greg had said that he had to go because someone had just pulled up. Greg had said he worked on his car all afternoon until it got dark. Apparently, Jaden was playing with the dogs and was able to go in and out of the house through the back porch. By 6 p.m., Greg says he didn't feed Jaden at all that day, which doesn't really make sense because Jaden was only one. Toddlers eat a lot. And Belinda even said that when Jaden was hungry, he would cry a lot. Another neighbor had called Greg around 8 p.m., but he didn't answer the phone. So there were a few times that Greg was totally MIA. He didn't answer the phone for Belinda either when she wanted Jaden dropped off at her house. This neighbor tried calling again at 10 p.m., and they did speak with Greg for about a half an hour, and Greg had asked if she had extra diapers. She suggested Greg go to the store and buy some, but there was no evidence that Greg purchased more diapers, even though he had apparently run out. Greg had claimed he didn't leave the house at all that day when babysitting, but his friend Mr. McCarthy had been trying to reach Greg all afternoon to return some Nintendo controllers. McCarthy picked up Mr. Horsecroft, who had plans to play video games with Greg that evening, and they drove past the house about 7.30 p.m., but Greg's car was not in the driveway. 
They tried to call Greg, but he was still not answering his phone. So they ended up going elsewhere to play Nintendo. So where was Greg? A neighbor of Belinda's said that at around 12.30 a.m., she heard a car revving and she looked outside and saw a green car that looked very much like Greg's parked outside Belinda's house. Then at 1 a.m., she heard the car start up again, and she also noted that this car could also resemble Yvonne Penfold's. But why was Greg or Yvonne at Belinda's house? Another witness had come forward saying that he saw a green Ford sedan in the vicinity of Blue Rock Dam around 12.30 a.m. on his way home from a hunting trip. He had tried to make note of the plate numbers, but by the time he called to report this, he had forgotten most of it. All he could remember was the number six or eight, which were numbers on Greg's car. Mr. Spark, another neighbor, said he was woken up at 2 a.m. by voices, banging, and glass breaking, which lasted about 30 seconds. And then he heard a car speeding off, but did not hear a baby crying. And that's interesting to me because Greg had said he didn't leave his house until closer to 2.30 to pick up Belinda from Ryan's hotel. So this means he left his house much earlier than he reported. Forensics also did some trials and tests to see how Jaden's body could have been put into the dam. And after several tests, it was believed that a person would need to stand about waist height in the water to throw the body with the weight of the sleeping bag and the crowbar for it to land in the area where Jaden's body was found. Now remember, there was a wet wallet, money, and a hamper full of wet clothes. There were also alleged confessions from Greg while he was incarcerated. And in the inquest, these prisoners were referred to as prisoner F, M, and R. Now I'm not going to go into detail what F, M, or R said, but they all claim that Greg was admitting to them that he murdered Jaden while incarcerated. And none of their statements were used in court due to not having anything recorded. Greg apparently wrote an unpublished book while he was behind bars during the trial, where he actually claims that he had changed Jaden's clothes because they got wet from a car seat. They had played Nintendo that day and went outside to work on Greg's car. So Greg would work on the car and Jaden, practically still a baby, would be playing with the dogs. And it had started to rain, so he said they went into the house and had some chocolate. And the two went back outside to work on the car. And when outside, he noticed that the car jack had come down and admitted in his book that the car jack was faulty. Greg also wrote that his wallet had fallen out of his pocket while working on the car and had gotten wet. So he went back inside and put his wet money under the mattress while Jaden was left to play with some greasy bolts nearby the car. He also admits to being stoned that night and lied to police about taking drugs. Belinda also wrote an unpublished book about the fight to seek justice for her son. Belinda blames the coroner for not investigating her son's death good enough. She also regrets being by Greg's side and defending him after the incident. She thought he was innocent and trusted him for years and years until Greg's police interviews were shared with her, where she finally saw all the inconsistencies and lies. Greg recently went on 60 Minutes Australia and spoke to them about his side of the story. There's a big difference from an accident, you know, to say murder or something like, but nothing happened at all, you know, that while he was at my house. He still says he didn't do anything, but his choice of words are interesting. He also still seems quite upset, and I can't help but feel like there's some deep secrets that he's keeping. I also found out that just weeks after he appeared on TV, there was a warrant issued for Greg's arrest in April of 2021. He failed to show up to court for the accusation of having attacking someone with a makeshift spear in November of 2019. He did finally get arrested and had to donate $100 to the Salvation Army and abide by a good behavior bond for 12 months without conviction. My thoughts? I know that Greg is considered innocent by the court, so I guess I have to say he's innocent legally, but there are just far too many holes in Greg's story for me to believe that he had nothing to do with Jaden's disappearance or death. 
I don't know how Australian laws work, but it's too bad that there wasn't something else he could be charged with for allegedly leaving Jaden home alone when he went to pick up Belinda. Child abandonment, causing an abduction, I don't know, anything to keep him off the streets. It's also really frustrating too when investigators miss major things like fingerprinting or taking clothes from a hamper. And what are the chances on the very same night Kenny Penfold and his team would vandalize Greg's home, causing even more confusion? I don't think Greg had a good plan because I don't think he meant to kill Jaden on purpose. And he took advantage of his house being vandalized so he could point the finger to someone else and he just got lucky that it happened. To me, Greg is a liar. He lied about the hospital, about hurting Jaden, about Jaden. He had a history of hurting Jaden and other people. I don't think he planned on hurting Jaden. I do sort of feel like it was an accident and he's just kind of lied through his teeth since. But I'd love to know your thoughts. Do you think he did it? Do you think it was the pig's head team? Do you think someone else had something to do with it? That's it for today. I hope you guys found this case interesting. If you want to show me some support, please hit subscribe. We'll see you next week.